the table. He is an actor, a podcaster, a reality television personality, and a friend of our podcast, Radio Labyrinth. Give it up for Ming Chen. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that fine introduction. You are very welcome. This is a very long introduction for our next guest. He's an American voice and stage actor, best known for playing Frylock on the Adult Swim show Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Thunder Police on the Brack show. He has also performed in several theatrical musicals and plays, including South Pacific. You know, I was just out of your hair later. Two Trains Running, A Soldier's Play, and Waiting for Godot. He provided the voice of Jonah Bishop on the Nickelodeon series Welcome to the Wayne. Clap for Karen Eve. Now, gentlemen, my work is done. Now, these two guys will answer your questions. I will be walking around. Just put your hand up, and I will come to you, and you can uh, ask questions. So why don't you guys give yourselves an introduction? I'm gonna get closer, guys. Oh, I'm gonna get some right now, Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. yeah, Fry Luck is ready. Are you ready, Cool the Cat? They're not ready. Yeah, they're ready. Sorry. Not, well, they can, they can never they're be like, ready. Why is he doing Randy Macho Man? Because it's a versus thing. They put us up to this. They said Aqua Team versus Comic Book Man. So, you know. It's a rumble. I can't uh, say let's get ready to rumble. Was it an anvil? We could oh, sizes. hold on, it could be. Oh, maybe it's where my fingers are. In the restrooms. Is that any better? And I asked Curtis, I said, so what came first, the booger or the snot? You know, because he's snot on American Dad. Yes. Booger on, get it, booger? Yes. But anyway, that's another story. Okay. Well, booger came first. You folks had some coffee today? Y'all need to wake my up, hands man. Come on. This stuff is supposed to be funny. Why don't you guys tell everybody what you're doing right now besides sitting here? What are you working on now? What What's are you working on now? Me and you first. Hi, Garrett B. Through. I'm working on trying to get back on TV. Uh, Comic Con got, got canceled three years ago, and uh, that's you're in the new Clerks movie. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. Jeez, oh, man. You, well, you gotta you, tell this guy how to promote himself. Uh, yeah, any Kevin Smith fans out there? Any Kevin Smith fans? Any Kevin Smith fans? Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kevin did make Clerks three over the summer. Uh, it's been shot. It's been finished. He's working on post production. But yeah, one day he calls me. He's like, Hey, uh, I want to put you in the movie for one day. You and the other comic book men, um, can you show up at the quick stop, the, the grocery, you know, the quick stop store uh, on this day? I show up. I was like, hey, what, so what are we doing? He's like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the roof, and we're gonna play hockey again on the roof of the quick stop. We're gonna be playing hockey with Randall and Dante, and uh, you know, as a big fan of the movie, it's a very iconic scene. And uh, I was like, dude, man, like, put me on TV. Shout out to my boy Brian O'Hara. We're at Kusicon in Georgia. We're in Rome, Georgia. I'll, uh, I like him even though he's a New York Rangers fan. I'll forgive him for that. But yeah, we, uh, yeah, I, I, in, the, in the movie though, it looks like a full scale uh, uh, hockey hockey game going on. I mean, the size of the, the roof is about you know maybe about the, the width of this table. So there's no chance you could play a real hockey game up there. But um, so how we, many hours were you up there? We were up there for about three hours. It was 100 degrees out. Uh, I, I think I sweated off about 20 pounds. So what time of the year was it supposed to be? Like I was in shooting. the movie, I think it was supposed to be like spring, so it wasn't oh, okay. supposed to be that. Yeah, I was gonna say it's supposed to be winter, so we had to talk to 
Yeah, no coke. No coke. But it, it was cool battling it out on the uh, playing street hockey with those guys. Um, yeah, it, it's it's fun starting as a fan of something and then you get put into something like that. That's that's the legacy of the comic book man. Yes. The moral of the story is uh, if you love something, keep doing it. And who knows? You could wind up on the roof of a convenience store <laughs> in Clerk Street. Like you just never know. I love Rosario Dawson. Rosario Dawson is amazing. She is even more beautiful than she's in the movie. Um, you're you're a, you're a man of fine taste, my friend. Um, yes. Rosario Dawson. Is I am. An amazing. Is it? Uh, <laughs> Is an amazing woman. Um, uh, she came on the court, uh, not clearly really, comic book plan. She came on the uh, comic book plan. Uh, I, I, I gotta confess, I have not seen your show. Oh, you don't need to see my show. You know, me. like you know me in real life. But I know you. You know what an idiot I am in real life. You don't need to no, watch no, it on TV. Not really. Yeah, I'm a goofball. No. You got kidnapped by Joey Fatone. I did get kidnapped by Joey Fatone. Joey Fatone kidnaps you. You gotta go. Yes. Yeah. 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 Tell yeah. Him, tell us where you. Uh, Joe, we, <laughs> or is that confidential? No, 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 I went with Joe and They went to his brothel, we and there was go. these women there with the boobs. We, the boobs? We did not go to I a was doing Carl. <laughs> <laughs> they got the chicks in there with the boobs in the Hot Rod magazine. Was so this like Northside Drive? No, 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 tell them what we were in Shreveport. We were in uh, Louisiana, Louisiana and, uh, and yeah, Joey Fatone and uh, uh, James Murr Murray from the Practical Jokers uh, kidnapped me, took me to a Cajun restaurant. Um, and then, uh, then we were hitting on older women at, uh, behind the restaurant. Uh, There's a big live music band. Like, no big deal. Oh, I <laughs> thought you were going to say in the alley behind the restaurant. No, was, it wasn't that. There serious. was these uh, cougars back there. There were cougars back. And we were hitting on them, and they, they hit back. They hit on us hard. It, it was very. No wonder I didn't see you the rest of the night. Yes, there aren't any kids here, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be an old. Oh me. <laughs> Being the merciful. Yeah. Merciless. Merciless when I want to be, yeah. Misogynistic, maybe. Never. No. Never. <laughs> Absolutely never. Absolutely never. What, do, what are you working on right now? I love, like, you're in musicals? You can sing and dance? Um, I have been known to. That's yes. amazing. I used to be in the Atlanta Opera Chorus in the bass section. Oh. The Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Chorus. I, I, um, I started doing theater in college on the day. Somebody came to my dorm room and said, they're looking for somebody to play a specific type of character right. in a show. And you know, all the guys in college you go, you go to school with, they're, they're all macho dudes, you know, the character is supposed to be kind of feminine. Sure. For lack of a bit. I hope I politically correct you said that. Yes. I don't it's want to get in uh, any hot water like Dave Chappelle. No, it's an adjective. We love everybody. So so anyway, so I go to audition for this show when I'm in school, Lincoln University, Jefferson, Missouri, by the way. Read my bio, it's all there. So, <laughs> they're like, who are you again? So anyway, so I go to audition for this specific character. Okay. And I get the heavy, I get the role of the villain. Yes. Show, the, you know, the English teacher is usually the theater director in college. So she was like, no, I want you to play the heavy, I want you to play the villain in this show. So from then on, I just got the bug, man. I started doing theater in college, and next thing you know, I graduated, moved back home to St. Louis for a minute, and I was doing theater with um, a local company. And if you ever saw the movie Soapbox, you remember when the, the scene where the guys on stage is doing dinner theater? And this, guy, this old man is like, wants to salt. He like breaks the character and just gives the guy to salt. It was, it was a situation like that. Yeah. I've done shows like that, and I come to Atlanta in 93. And I did South Pacific with Robert Goulet. Wow. He and Robert Paige O'Hara. Robert Goulet was such a ham. He was such a, he was, been, all this for a lousy 10,000 bucks. <laughs> and his wife looked, looked like Peggy Bundy. She had the bouffant hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the all that. Clothes, she was yeah. like, oh, he's just kidding. But I'm thinking to myself, oh, yeah. No, he didn't sound like he was kidding. But, you know, it, it was cool. I played Henri the Houseboy and several other characters. And if you remember the movie South Pacific, there was nothing like a day. The world. So yeah, I learned some good jokes when I was doing musical theater in Atlanta. I can't tell them here though. <laughs> space Ghost! Yeah! There What's he up? is, ladies and gentlemen. Stand up, Space Ghost. Give him a round of applause. Space Ghost. George Lowe, do you see this? Papa George. I 
tell you, you ever met George Love? I've met George several times. Oh, uh, what do you, what's your impression of George? Uh, I love him. He's got a very dry sense of humor. And uh, yeah, he's dry. Yeah, yeah, more dry. like slimy. Slimy? Can you do an impression of him? I bet you can. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm sitting here with Frylock, and I'm behind a bus, a school bus mob, <laughs> with a bunch of nuns. Get me out of here. And you Papa got George Love. What could Papa George agree up for you today? That's what he said. You got the mom in because he always mentions oh, mom. Well, mom. Mom can't make it to me. Mom. She passed away well, I not too long ago. Him. Broke his heart. I'll let you know. Um, George is an OG. He's an original. He, this, this is a little uh, tidbit about Space Ghost, Papa George. Okay. He's old school. He's so old school that when he was popping around Atlanta um, auditioning for stuff, he would hand out a, a headshot of him. And sometimes it would be him in the Space Ghost costume or whatever. And he would call himself Mr. Beefy. <laughs> Mr. Beefy. And he would hand a can of potted meat. Okay. And his hand a pink shot. Right. So, you know, the little devil hand with the yeah, two yeah, devil. Yeah, yeah, So he would hand yeah. a can of that over with his head shot of resume. Mr. Beefy. That was his moniker. Did it work? Apparently, yeah. Oh, well, he was Captain Air Tram. And what was that one with, with the jet chicken? Jet Chicken on the uh, Aquatine. Yes. He's yes. very proud of Jet Chicken. And he's a hell of an artist, actually. He is. His work can be seen in the High Museum of Art in Atlanta. And, uh, so you're quite the artist yourself. Oh, me? No. Yes, I follow you on oh, Instagram. No, no, no. no, no Perry, no. what don't you do? He's a renaissance uh, man. I would, I would answer like my buddy did, the voice of Roger Rabbit. What's his name? The voice of Roger Rabbit. The voice of Roger Rabbit. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. One second, I'll have to tell you. But anyway, we did a show together and somebody asked him. I can't answer. Oh, yeah, that family is One of them was Skydiving. Yeah, okay. that has something to do with the very intro. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> before we do as clean as I can make it. Before I go out into the crowd here okay. for questions, before I have one of my own. Okay. That's, That's a very you. important question. Okay. I the crowd would be bigger. Where's everybody? Hey! There's a panel going on over here. Get here. So, Stay with you people. You got stuff to talk about. Oh, here they go. Come on in. Come, hey, on, oh, come hey. to the panel. Hey. <laughs> Frylock is here with Min Chen. Get here now. Anyway, if the comic book men were yes. to be cast in a new season of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, okay. who would play Frylock? Oh, wow. Frylock? Well, first of all, we're both from New Jersey, so I think it would fit. I think we're like one exit away from each other. Right, right. Yeah, I. I'm pretty wise. I think Brian Johnson would probably fly like. I would be. That, I would definitely be beat one. No you doubt. would be definitely. That's what Jeff put on here. Yeah, I'd definitely be beat one. All right, Master Shake. Master Shake would be Walt Flanagan for sure. Okay. And uh, Carl would be Mike Mike, Mike Tapsey. Sure. All right. Yeah, there's no or or Kevin. We can put Kevin in. As well, Carl. that's what we were thinking for Doctor Weird. Uh, Doctor Weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gentlemen! Yes, for sure. Yeah, but his character's silent in that movie, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, but he's going to be an Aqua Teen, not... Uh, oh, Kevin would be a silent Bob, so... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how would he be Dr. Weird? I mean, well, you got to suspend know. disbelief. Maybe he'd be Steve. You got to... I don't know. I don't know. So there's a shitty question. Uh, my bad. Hey, I'm just throwing it out there, man. Yeah. That's a great question. Uh, who would be Carl? Who would be Carl? Uh, 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 Brian Johnson, or no, no, uh, Mike, or either Mike Johnson or Kevin Smith would be called. Definitely Dr. Weird, though. I would have to go with Dr. Kevin. Dr. Weird, yeah. yeah. He's got the face for it, you know, the helmet. Do you, uh, do you remember getting that call that came in? We got this great part from you know, our voice of a bunch of fries from New Jersey. Actually, actually, the thing is, I was already doing, at the time I was doing with the for a no swim. Okay. Actually, it's for Cartoon Network. It's like, I'm going to get the next one, Project Network. Pokemon, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I think I was the one who told everybody about Goku's death this season. Goku died. But the big thing was I was the I was the announcer for Samurai Jack, the first incarnation of Samurai Jack. And the next Samurai Jack, Jack gets into this, so that and the other. Jack and the Scotsman, or whatever. And I was doing that, and at the time, a production assistant well, at the time he was a production assistant, he was probably a CEO or not. His name is Larry Morris. I don't remember the name well because I went to high school with a kid named Larry Morris in the 80s in St. Louis. But my Larry Morris was born like Spicoli from uh, Fast Times in yeah. Mount High. You know, we had show and tell 
He brought his pet tarantula. This is my pet tarantula. His name is Gazebo. <laughs> Here. Wait a minute. Gazebo, where'd you go? Anybody <laughs> see Gazebo? Uh-oh. Yeah, he was that type of dude. Right. But anyway, this Larry Morris was a different Larry Morris. He ran the Matt Malero and Dave Willis, the co-creators of the show. He was like, you gotta hear this Kerry Mees guy. He'd be perfect for this show you're doing about his food products. So next thing you know, my agent's calling me up and going, you got an audition, very important. It's the show they're doing about. And I had no pictures. I, had, I didn't know what Frylock looked like at the time. And I was, I was uh, this was like the late 90s, early 2000s. I was the guy that would call your house and say, what do you think of your paper provider, sir? <laughs> do you think that in 10 years everyone will have a cell phone? Someone like me, not at all like me, really? Click, I was the one you were hanging up on. Right. They would call your house during dinner to ask you to do an hour-long cable survey. Do you think in the future you're going to pause, rewind, and fast forward live TV? What is this? Ah! You know, get hung up on a lot. So I'm in the break room of that job, my day job, in Sandy Springs, Georgia. Yes, it was called Booth Research. I can say it now because it's defunct. Peter Booth, Booth Research, thank you for starting my career. Thank you, Peter. You're the best. Anyway, so I'm in the break room with the script from Rabbi. Once upon a time, kids, there was this thing called Fax Machine. Yes. <laughs> and they would uh, make these weird noises. Uh, all these zeros and ones would come over. They would form words and letters and numbers. So I'm sitting, I'm standing in the break room of my day job, reading from the script from Rabbi. So my agent tells me about the character. She doesn't tell me what he looks like. She's like, okay, your character's name is Frylock. He's the serious one. He wants to solve the mystery. <laughs> He's a straight man. The other two are just idiots. I'm like, okay, got it. So I'm looking at the script from Rabbi and I'm going, okay, no, meanwhile, don't get the jam box. And the, the, Matt Malero and Dave Willis are just cracking up on the other end. There's a conference call on the other end of the line and he's cracking that ladder. I'm just like, this is crap. I'm not going to get this job. I hang, I hang the phone up. I'm like, ah, oh, forget all about it. That's the thing with voiceover. If you're interested in getting into the business, don't put all your eggs in one basket. In other, in other words, don't hinge your bets and go, gotta get this, oh Lord, please. Don't get me wrong, I had prayed for gigs. And that was one of them. Oh Lord, please, let me get this gig. But you know, sometimes you get them, but most of the time you don't. Even, even some of the biggest names will tell you, they still have to audition for stuff. Unless you're George Clooney, then they just put it right in front of you. You're playing Moses. Right here, Mr. Clooney. So that's, that's the thing that hurts some guys like me too. You got these A-listers that are doing B.O.s now. So it's like... Oh, yeah, like, 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 yeah, like they can't leave for, for everybody else. They got hey, everything. Hey. Now they want to do a voiceover. Well, you know, if Bill Murray wants to do Garfield, Bill Murray's going to do Garfield. That's a bad example, isn't it? Uh, I mean... Like they asked him in Zombieland, do you have any regrets? Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it twice. So he, he's both he did it twice? I said, yeah, wasn't he in the tale of two kids? There were two movies, and yeah. now he's saying how much he regrets it in the press. But yeah, I'm but sure. he didn't regret that check. Exactly. No. Ah, he did not regret the, the Garfield check. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, so. Anyway, what was the question? <laughs> well, you guys, you want me to open it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open anyway, it up, why? Let's open it up. Anybody, anybody we'll put your hands up, I'll come to you. If you got ask a question for these guys, please, please ask anything. Don't say that, me. Don't tell me to ask anything. No I questions. Know. No questions? I got a question. Yes. I got a question. Yeah, the beautiful uh, lady in the front yes. row. Beautiful Leah. What's Hi, up? Hi. So I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Jasu Cornejo. Um, let's see. It was. Sorry, it's on your phone, babe. That's right. Um, Schwam Carlucci says, "Could you ask if we can ever expect any new ATHF ever again?" Never. There will never be any more. No, just Okay, well, talk no, no, about no, no. next I'm gonna year. Add, I'm going to answer the question because I've been telling people all day to come to this panel. Okay. And I'm going to make a special announcement. Whoa. So, <laughs> here it is. The special announcement. Frylock gets paid more than anybody else on the show. That's it. No, just No, no, actually, no. I'm probably on the other end of that spectrum. But anyway. Nothing about that. So there's new Aqua Team coming. You've probably seen this. Some of y'all have probably seen this. There's a new Venture Brothers movie. There's a new Aqua Team movie. And there's a new Metal Aquilips movie. Coming out. I can't tell you when, because I don't know. But there's also going to be 
New Aqua Teen shorts coming out. They're six minutes long, like the old Warner Brothers cartoons were, Bugs Bunny and all that. So they're going to be like six minutes long, and like MCP Pants will probably have his own six minute short. And the uh, Moon and Knights will have theirs, and the Frat Aliens will have theirs, and of course the Aqua Teens will have theirs. And you'll see some of your old favorite side characters popping up again. I think it's going to be called Aqua Dunk or something like that. It's going to be on HBO Max and Adult Swim. I can't tell you when that's coming out because I didn't knew. I did my VO for it. And I sat waiting for the check. <laughs> that's the way that goes, you know. So how come they changed the title of the show after a certain amount of seasons? That was Matt Malero and Dave Willis. That, they were just, I guess, being facetious to the network. Or just being cagey with pulling the adult swim. Because they were, they, we actually unofficially got canceled before we officially got canceled. Okay. So it was like, I was at a con, at, at, I was at a panel at Dragon Con one year, and this kid stood up and said, so how did it feel when you were canceled? What? And everybody on the panel, I was like, I was the only one apparently who didn't know this. <laughs> and this was before we officially got canceled in 2016. This was like, this was like 2011, 2012, 2013, something like that. The Dragon Con, and I looked down the, oh, on his the panel, right. and I was like, what do you mean? Canceled. So Dave Willis filled the question, and he was like, oh. Question. <laughs> so, no comment. Yeah, yeah. No comment. It was like, he, we was canceled. What was this? But apparently, we had been canceled a couple of times. I got another question for you. Not One more question, though. Okay, so same guy asked. So, how much was that deal you got from Carl's Jr. and Hardee's? <laughs> 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 yeah, the exact number. Please. Deal like that? The same deal like that when we did a bunch of ringtones for Sprint. We actually did a bunch of ringtones for Sprint. Yeah. Like, you know, you can hear that. Ring, your phone is ringing. Ring, answer the phone. Ring, you got a call. That's Dana doing shit. So, if you ever ask Dana to do your voicemail, that's what you're going to hear. Pick up the phone, not nuts. You got a phone call. Me, Frylock, you know. My friend on the case that your phone is ringing. You gonna answer that or what? So we're in the booth doing these ringtones yeah. for Sprint. And I look at the, the Sprint executive was on the other side of the glass. So I'm like, so will we get free phones out of this? And everybody starts laughing. <laughs> no. So basically, uh, I hope that answers your question because I do have a few of those Frylock figurines that people have sent me. And I've made it known that if you want me to sign one, I'll sign one for you and mail it back to you for only 25 bucks. So I do that. You see me posting stuff, people, on Instagram and Facebook and on my YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube we channel. We don't have access Please subscribe to any of that, so no. To all your frenemies and enemies and friends. But what he's talking about, these figures, yeah, you There's send no them to us, we'll sign it and send it back. On YouTube. Um, if you go to Bing, you got like Terry Means, followers. Voice of Frylock, we uh, have not, a bunch of like uh, million, but I'm, work, I'm working on it. A bunch I'm of prints to to that he'll sign for you and send to, to you. To you. Your resume is way longer uh, than mine. You'll oh, find him at he conventions. Like you can, he'll sign prints I've done you. one thing. He does I one thing. art commissions. What musical were you in, Bing? I wasn't, yeah, no. Uh, starting in 200, he'll draw aqua teens in different situations. I'm gonna write He's got a whole bunch of stuff on there. Forget about it. Well, so, you know, yeah, check it's it like out. I'm best known um, for being You can also message right. him so I'm gonna ride directly on Facebook. Oh, yeah, as they crinkle. About ordering stuff. <laughs> you know, they can ride them before. People come for us. They crinkle. We have ways where you can, you can order stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Delicious. Thank you for the questions, Leah, and everybody watching. Anybody out of here have a question? Yeah, there's someone back there. Did he leave? Yeah, some guy rose his hand. Yeah, he looked very adamant. I don't see him, though. What happened to the guy who wanted to ask a question? Nobody wants it. You don't be shy. Question? Nobody? I have a question. You have a question? Your arm's been uh, askew. He was just stretching. Oh, hey. Hey, would you guys ever right. work together? Oh, dude. He'll see it anyway. Because he's going to see all your comments yeah, and stuff. He got this the is Facebook, Kevin Smith, so, yeah. I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thanks he in with the big dogs, out. man. He in movies and stuff. Talking about he never did a musical. Well, I never did a major... Hollywood production. Well, you got the Movie. Chops, first of all. Either, sing. either, neither. You can dance. Well, you got a great voice. Yeah, I can do all that. I mean, I think... People I think, have been telling me for years, you need to leave Atlanta. You need to go to L.A. I'm like, wait, can I stay with you? 
go to LA and live in the gutter? Carrie Means, the voice actor, was found dead, stabbed to death with the gutter, Los Angeles. He was trying to be an actor. It didn't work out too well for him. Those are the breaks. Next on Nightline. Oh, hey, whenever you get ready to do a voice, do you spend all day or like a whole week doing the same voice? Like, oh, yeah, you go, you go method and talk uh, to your yeah. wife all the time. You, oh, you know, voice? like I said about Frylock, I, I had nothing to go on. All my agent told me was, okay, his name is Frylock, <laughs> Sherlock, get it, get the correlation. He wants to be the detective, he wants to solve a mystery. And Frylock just came out of nowhere, really. You know, I just said, no, me, well, I don't get a jam box, and they were just cracking up. The other the folks. I said it how I thought the character should say it, and it came down to me and one other guy. And the other guy was too boring, too droll, too dull. So I ended up getting, getting the part. But see, they said, when we did Rap Out, if you notice, the very first episode, I'm talking real slow and real lethargic, like, yes, this is a fun pool. I do, no splashing. And they was like, Terry, that was great, but the next episode, I think you need to pick up the pace a little bit. Because they wanted Friday to sound cool. So I'm like, okay, you want somebody to sound cool, but you want them to talk faster. Usually when somebody sounds cool, they talk like this. Yeah. Right. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'd be like, damn, that guy's pretty cool. But you know, so I had to pick up the pace a little bit because it was only a 12 minute show with no commercials. And Tim, I think you asked me why Aqua was canceled. Yes. And I said hubris. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the answer, hubris. Hubris. No, he says, it was a bunch of political BS. I think Mike Lazo and Keith Crawford got tired of the show. And they had been wanting to get rid of it for whatever reason. I don't know. These guys or the guys that ran or maybe still run or don't swim. I don't, I don't really know who's in charge over there. They don't even call me anymore except for the Aqua Teen stuff. The final season of Aqua Teen was Emmy worthy. All the episodes are great, but that final season is just a. Hey, uh, I agree with you. Beautiful you know what? artwork, great Best comedy. theme song ever. Damn right. And I'll tell you yeah. why. I got jacked by the cops, they shot potato tops, busted the moonlights from flicking moon rocks. Got to be wide watch and eliminate shake. The fries go down, he got the drum break. <laughs> Those are my own original. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Clap. No talk. Yeah, clap. Right. Clap. Yeah, yeah, clap. 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 I'll be here all day. Yes. Try We have another question. Mellow Yellow. Space Ghost has a question. You didn't say it. Those are your original lyrics. So considering I'm in the character of he Space Ghost's grandfather, Leonard Ghostel, voiced by much of man Randy Savage, did you ever have the opportunity, yeah, the opportunity to work with much of man in an inclusive work? I would have loved to have worked with much of man Randy Savage. No. But I have met a few wrestlers. I think I mentioned the Nasty Boys earlier. I met, hung out with them. Those guys go hard. And we did a three-day show together in Iowa. And they, I think it was Iowa. I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Nah, I'm wrong. Let's say it was Iowa. But wherever it was, we did this three-day show together. And they went balls to the walls on Friday. They went hard. They went out partying and drinking and carousing. See, I can tell this now, but at the time, they didn't want to let their wives know what they were really doing. They were calling their wives going, the truth is so bad. We're just having a horrible time. <laughs> it's terrible. Our rules weren't even right. Nothing's right, honey. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, they were doing that while they were at the damn beer tavern. B-I-E-R tavern. One of those where they got the big steins and right, the beer cups and the everything. Beer gun, the leader they're getting beer. free drinks. The waitress is flirting with them and everything. And they're calling their wives going, oh, it's so horrible, honey. And then, what? I, I don't Sorry, know, Brian, I hot. keep forgetting the knobs his partner. But the dark hair with the other nasty boy. What? Yeah. That guy. He puts me on the phone with his wife and he goes, hey, Frylock, talk to my wife. You know, with that Philadelphia accent. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? She's like, hi, Frylock. You know, she's like, sound like mobsters, sound like good fellas. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there talking to his wife. And then I told her what happened Friday night. He said, you know, you, your husband went balls to the wall Friday night. He said, give me the phone back. Don't tell my wife. Keep telling on me. I was like, don't hand the phone to Frylock. Don't. Just, just don't. Because Frylock goes, tells it like it is. This is what happened. This is what happened. But another cool wrestler I hung out with, uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Yes. Legend. Remember him? You ever Legend. meet him? 
I never met him. Oh, we Tell did me a show all about him. We did a show together, man. And he's a great guy. I shot a video with him and everything. He's a cool dude. We both agreed that Spirit Airlines suck. <laughs> Spirit Airlines, I'm sorry, but you guys are horrible. If I could do what Joe Pesci did in Lethal Weapon, they F you on the luggage. They F you on the luggage. They say they're cheaper than every other airline, right? But if you've ever flown them, you had to check a bag. No. You see why they're cheaper than every other airline. Oh, you want to check that bag, Mr. Beans? That'll be $57. Yeah, oh, you want to put that bag over your head? That'll be $52. Oh, you doing? want some water? That'll be $3. We're going to breathe our air on the airplane. All right, let me know the $10. Oh, you want a seatbelt? It's in my right. Oh. I will not fly Spirit Airlines. And the reason I say all this is because uh, Brutus Barber was like, they lost my luggage. You lose a wrestler's luggage. Oh. That's pretty bad news for you. Because, you know, he started off as beautiful Brutus. He was like a Chippendales type wrestler. And his thing was like pretty boy stuff. You know? He comes out like one of the Chippendales. But then his agent decided to change his moniker. He's like, we're going to change it. We're going to make you Brutus the Barber. We're going to knock him out, then you're going to... Cut their hair, then you're gonna control what it looks like. Yeah. It's gonna be great. So you're gonna love it. All that type of stuff. I mean, uh, these wrestlers. I also met uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. That's really the first wrestler that I did a show with. Yeah, good guy. Good uh, guy. Really good guy. And funny tidbit about Jake the Snake. He was definitely afraid of snakes. <laughs> I he hates snakes. He's like Indiana Jones with snakes. And that was his thing. He was supposed to come in the ring with a snake, and he did it. You know, money's a powerful thing. Damien. Yeah. <laughs> Have another question. Uh, this question is for me. Yes. So whenever you're working with Kevin Smith, I don't know where you he lobby went. for uh, maybe more time or different <laughs> characters, anything of that nature? I, uh, I don't lobby for anything for Kevin. So, uh, I, so early awesome. after I met that Kevin, guy right, there. Uh, Sorry. right after he finished Mars, he made Chase and Amy. He's like, hey, I think this movie Dogma is about two fallen angels played by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. We're gonna shoot pit first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna put you in it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So one day he calls me like, hey, can you get to Pittsburgh? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a six-hour drive. I'll, I'll go up there to be in the Kevin Smith movie. I get there, and it's this rundown strip club in Pittsburgh, and I'm like, am I in the right place? And I go in, and there's like lights and stuff set up, and I see Kevin. And I'm like, hey man. The, what is what? What's this movie about? And he's like, I, I told you, two fallen angels, um, and this is where we're shooting the scene today. I'm like, all right, so what? You have to put me in the background? That's cool, man. I just want to be in a Kevin Smith movie one day. Like that's that's every fanboy's dream. He's like, no, 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 no. So the scene is shot at a strip club. I'm gonna put you next to me and Jay, Jason Mewes, Jay and Silent Bob. So this is set up. Selma Hayek is gonna come out. She's gonna take her clothes off and plays a stripper. I want you to act like you're liking this. Can you do this? I'm like, I don't know, man. This, this is, I might have to go full method on this. Like, I don't know if I can act this. Act this. But uh, if you watch the scene, I think I nailed it. I looked like a guy who's really enjoying it. Now I gotta watch there. Dogma again. Because yeah. I have no idea yeah, that but you I, were I, in that movie. Dude. Yeah. What are you talking like, about my credits? Come on. This no, dude, I was, I was a this dude's in Dogma. He's in Clerks 3. That's a glorified he's a comic book man. Total nepotism. Yeah, Look but like you were there. I was there. You were a featured extra. I was there. There's a difference. Matt Jane, you know, I, I got to Selma Hayek. And he was like, oh, I'd like to introduce one of the other actors. This is Chris Rock. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. all right. Yeah. So Carrie doesn't know what Selma Hayek turns into. Not in that movie. Yeah. No, different movie, different movie. Oh, that's He's talking about that's Dust Till Dawn. Dawn. That's satanic. Come on, Tim. Movie. No, 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 no. Is it Coach here? Now, wait a minute. No, I think she plays Serendipity. Does. In Dawn. That's does. right. She that's was Serendipity. She's a, she, she's a muse. Yes. That's there right. right. Yeah, Come but, on, Tim. But, get it together. I mean, so, understand me, after <laughs> that, I'm like, bro, you don't have to do me any favors or, or you don't have to do anything for me after that. He kept going, though. He put me on TV, showed me on a podcast. Uh, and then put me in all the other movies, but he owes me nothing. Like after that, the man owes me nothing. So I'm, yeah, I'm very, very lucky. To, like top three, top hey, three moments hey, in my Matt life. Smith, sure. if you're watching this. All right, so who's the doo doo demon? Uh, I mean, I was a rubber monster, so there was, yeah, they didn't really put anybody in that thing. Damn it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all good. It's all right, you can. Confuse dust till dawn. That's all right. Just get your Selma Hayek <laughs> performances in order. Yeah. All right. Everything be yeah. good to go. Uh, any more questions? Uh,
So yeah, I don't ask for like more screen time. Oh, I, I got like... another Aqua Teen announcement. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I said I had a couple of announcements. Okay. So I told y'all about the new movie okay. that's coming out. I don't know when. Last I heard, they were trying to get Jack Black to be the villain, but it, either he or his camp declined. This is a related story to that. How would you uh, decline? In the first Aqua Teen movie, they wanted. They wanted Tom Cruise to play Chicken Biddle. Oh. In the opening where Chicken Biddle like wants to crash the plane yeah. and all that. And uh, Dave Willis got a nice rejection letter from Mr. Cruise's camp that read as follows. I'm, I'm uh, summarizing. Okay. Mr. Cruise will not now nor ever be a part of your little Pink Patty show or your little Pink Patty movie, so stop asking. So Dave Willis took that rejection letter from Tom Cruise's camp hung it upside down and framed it and put it in his office. Now that's a rumor. I don't know if it's true, but it probably is knowing Dave Willis. I'm gonna say it's true. So, so that being said, we got Bruce Campbell to play in Chicken Biddle. <laughs> and better. a lot of people tell you that's a better fit. Oh yeah. By so far. it was great. So anyway, they wanted Jack Black to play the villain in this version of Aqua Team. It's not a sequel, it's a standalone movie, but it, it's got some familiar plot points from the show. Frylock gets tired of Shake's crap again. Moves out of the Apple Team house again. Gets a job as an IT at a fake Amazon type company. But instead of packages to your house, right. it empty boxes. It turns into monsters. <laughs> wow. So Frylock is unaware that they're doing this. When he, when he finds out, the, the fries hit the fan, so to speak. Whoa. And so the... the, the the CEO of the company. See, this is a riff on Amazon and Jeff Bezos and all. It's a riff on, on the, they riff on a lot of stuff. Yes. This one is way funnier than the first movie. It's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be way funnier. There's other guest stars in it, I, I'm not gonna tell you about, but I don't know who, is, who they're getting to play the villain now, so Jack Black or, and or his camp said no. They just figured he would be a perfect fit. He would've been, but Frylock and uh, the CEO of the company become bros and it's a romance form between the two. It would have been nice if Jack Black had to say yes. But he said no. So. Well, he turned it around. Maybe they should have asked Jim Carrey. But we don't have 20 million. So. No. So, I don't know. Does Jim Carrey still get 20 million? Uh, probably not. No. More like two. Really? What did he get for signing? I lost all my credibility thinking so much. I thought he was great as uh, the doctor, whatever, whatever the character villain's name is in the Sonic series. Oh yeah, Sonic Doc, uh, Doctor. Somebody knows I that. I have yes, a question. Doctor. No, I have a question. Okay. What are you What are you doing next weekend, Perry? What are you doing next weekend? That's what I was talking about. Thanks, baby. My You're lovely welcome. wife, Leah Levin Means, ladies and gentlemen. It's her birthday, by the way. Give her a please. Give her a We're talking about her. Nah, that's not important. Next weekend, I'm doing an Aqua Team Festival that's going to be aired on YouTube. You know, they had one of these a few months back. It's the Adult Swim Festival. Aqua Team Panel. It's, it's, panel. It's, it's a, we're doing an Aqua Team Panel on November 13th. And we're going to be talking about the movie, and I think they're going to take people calls and stuff like that. So you get a chance to ask the creators of the show questions that you might want to know the answers to. Cause I can't answer some of the questions they can answer. So Dave Willis, myself, Dana Snyder, and maybe Matt Malero will be there too. But definitely us three, we're gonna be on this. Aqua Team Hunger Force panel is gonna be sometime in the afternoon on November 13th. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, so tune in to YouTube, or uh, look, for, look for that next weekend. It's gonna be one of those adult room festivals that are gonna have live bands perform and stuff like that. And so, that was the other announcement. Thanks, baby. Are you, are you doing the, the, they're, just, they're streaming, are you doing it virtually? It's streaming. Or is it, okay, it's streaming. virtual. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be in my closet, like R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in the closet. <laughs> Leah puts me in the closet. She says get in the closet, that's what she does. Get in the closet, Get in the closet. Okay, baby, I'm in the closet. But then she doesn't plug up the mic. It's like, hello, I can't hear you. That's because you trip over it and the you microphone. unplug it all the time. Oh, it's the cats. They do it. The cats sure, blame yeah, it blame it on the cats. cats blame the cats. Tim, boy, how are we doing on time? How much time we got? I think we're doing fine on time. I think we have something to uh, present. Do we? We do? 
Oh, ladies and gentlemen, my lovely wife Leah, birthday is today. Yes. So please join me in singing. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy birthday. Oh my to God! You. They got me a cake. Happy oh, birthday oh, to my lovely wife Leah. Oh, Lemon look at that! With spider on it. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you both. How old are you? No, 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 no. I don't want to get beat up. <laughs> Alright, well, this is cool. Did you get our so. cake? We got our cake. What's yes, cake? come here. Bring the cake. Bring it's it up so here on the side. Yeah, you guys see this cake. Don't drop it. Look at that, oh. thank you. He's got bats and spider web. Oh, Eddie Price, come here. Eddie Price, get up here. Eddie I need Price. you, I need Eddie Price. This is that 3D guy, ladies and gentlemen. My road dog, <laughs> Pastor Eddie Price. <laughs> he will consult you. If you got problems in your life, go see Eddie Price. That's your tag. <laughs> you got problems in your life, go see Eddie Price. Yes. <laughs> so tell the story about you getting the cake and what the girl said when you wanted blood. My wife uh, called Food Line. Kathy Price, right here. I shouldn't have named the grocery store. All right, oh, <laughs> Food Line of Rome, Georgia, yes. right up the street here. Exactly. That food line. Rome, okay. Georgia, area code. I don't know that area code. But um, <laughs> she asked for Goth Cake, G O T H. And they were um, doing everything she said. I want bats. Oh, we got stuff left over from Halloween. We can do bats. And I want this. Oh, yeah, we can do it. And she said, I want bloody fangs. And the woman on the other end said, we will not be doing that. I don't know what line my wife crossed, but she crossed it. <laughs> bloody fangs. We will not be doing bloody fangs on nobody's birthday cake up here in Rome, Georgia. We can do bats. We can do spider webs. <laughs> You do, we do all that, but we will not, we will not be, doing bloody be doing bloody freaking hair. You can forget that, buddy. Eddie, you didn't pull the, like, don't you know who I am card? No, it was Kathy. It was oh, his Kathy. wife. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You guys are I'm so sure sweet. Was like, excuse me? Uh, you heard me. We will not. I wish you could have recorded that conversation. I, I would love to hear, like, go prank angels or something like that. I hope these people know. not know that is um what is this? I was gonna put it over here. That is yeah, certain people oh, calling so their cute. business. Tracy Morgan. This spoony so love cute. from up above. And I want a birthday cake for my wife. And we're gonna put a dildo on it. Can you put a huge vibrating dildo on it? Well not be doing that. Because I'm a spoony love from above. By the way, Tracy Morgan, the new voice of early Kyler on Squidbillies. Oh, you let the cat out of the bag. I did not know that. Well, there's a trailer. I didn't let anything out. Are you sure this? I'm Legit? positive. I saw it online, a YouTube trailer. Oh, yeah. Dana Snyder's been teasing that. Yes. In cons. We got a new one. It's got to be true. Well, there was I an actual trailer those. on a real legitimate website. Yeah, but they was using a lot of different voices for those. Yeah, uh, there's me and Juan doing one, yeah. and Dave doing one. But yeah, Everybody with me. Look, funny side note, they called me up when they were doing the original incarnation of Squid Builders and say, Carrie, I want you to come and read for Early. Then they say, Carrie, now read for the sheriff. Carrie, now read for Granny. Carrie, now read for Early Son. Now read for the river. They had me read for each and every character on Squid Builders at least three or four times, each. So I was like, I gotta hear one of these, right? <laughs> no, what they wanted to do was use me as a scratch. Oh. You know what a scratch is? Yes. That's when they play what they want the characters to sound for the cast that got the part. Oh. It's like, we want you to do Early. We want you to do it like this. Listen to this, it's Carrie B's going early. Listen to this, it's Carrie B's going True story. So you were a reference. Yeah. You were used as reference. Yeah. Not on that. They didn't tell me right then and there. But you know. It is what it is. I guess that's why I did that guest star panel on me. They were trying to make up for that. Maybe. Well, whose voice did you do? I don't remember. I did a monster. That's right. I was guest starring as a monster. As a monster. It was cool to meet the cast. Yeah. You know, the guy who played the Reverend, he was the very first voice you heard on This Is Cartoon Network. When Cartoon Network started airing, he was the VO guy who would say that. 
but he was the Reverend. He's dead now, rest in peace. He oh. passed away. So is the guy I did, Larry Munson. Well, the guy who was Dr. Weird and Steve, Clay Croker, the late C. Martin Croker, he designed Fry Like a Meatwad. He was a hell of an artist and a voice talent. So he's the voice of Steve and Dr. Weird. That's why you won't see Steve and Dr. Weird anymore. That was Clay Croker. He died in 2016. Good friend of mine and Eddie's. So we miss him dearly. Here's the glass. Raise the glass. Question? Anyone else? Shoot your hand up. Shoot your hand up if you have any more questions. No, they want some of these cake. That wouldn't do. Oh, is there enough for everybody? Are we going to divvy it up with a hand is? Grab the cake. If y'all want some yeah, cake. In the age of COVID, that's a great idea. They said they had plates. <laughs> I don't know what they did with them. We'll just put it in your hand. Plates and forks at the table. Oh, at your table, yes. Oh. Come on. I mean, that, you got to get people to your table. So now That's people are just going to come and get cake. They're not going to buy an autograph. <laughs> I'm just here for the cake. Thank you very much. The cake looks delicious. Could you imagine Gilbert Gottfried? Do a combo. Maybe deal. they should get him to be the villain in the movie. Yeah, Frylock, I love you. Together, we can run Airflack. Do a combo. Airflack. What did you say, Tim? I said, do it. Tim, you're already on my list because you couldn't remember which role Selma Hayek was playing. I had a bad day in the movie. What did she turn into? That's a good deal. Buy an autograph, get a piece of cake. Buy an autograph, get a piece of cake. I like the way you think. No redemption for myself yet. Some people can get some cake. Some people need to buy an autograph to get some cake. I'm looking at you, David Harvey. <laughs> He's like, I'm getting a piece of that damn cake. You ain't stopping me. <laughs> Space Ghost can have a piece of cake. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Space Ghost gets some cake. Because we got to do a photo on Space Ghost. So we got to send it to Papa George Lowe. Mandalorian, you get a piece of cake too. Mando. That's a badass Mandalorian, man. I like it that. Is. Mando gets cake. That's quite. Get the child with him. It's all good. What's that child's name? Grogu. Grogu. You had to think about it for a second. Grogu? Grogu. 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 It's a dumb man. <laughs> Yoda Jr. they should have called him. Or Yoda Sr. I just think it should have been Yoda reincarnated or something. That would have been cooler. But no. They had him making his own thing. Apparently there's a planet full of these guys. Somewhere. Maybe they'll get to that eventually. But I'm excited about the Book of Boba Fett. Oh, dude. That's coming out. ming now Wen and gonna be uh, good. Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, the trailer looked all... How do we get ourselves out of that, man? We look weird enough to be in the Star Wars universe, right? <laughs> we look weird. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, man. I'm hey, short enough to be a I only, look, right? I only look weird enough at shows, at cons. You know, <laughs> so do I. Man. Yeah, my frat like so I So do I. On, you know? Yes. Hey, me. if you could be a part of the Hunger Force, what would your character be and how would he sound like? I mean, I think it would just be me, right? I get, because I'm in New Jersey already. Just like Kane, this cartoon version of me. Like, like Paul, the monster you? whose wife left him. What would your name be? I think it would just what be food? me, but I would be like the short Asian neighbor that cooks like really smelly food. And like, I, I could be like a, the low rent, like Ken Jong from The Hangover. I just jump out of. I jump out of trunks naked. That guy is phenomenal. He's, he's a two broke girl. No, oh, that was another guy. Was that the same guy, two broke girls? I, I know. That that. He's from a community, though. I know he's a Transformers. He's one of the Transformers. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, he plays the, his, his character is great in the Hangover movies. Right? I just, I love Leslie Chow. I want to be oh, yeah. like a low budget Leslie Chow. I think no, that's how they, it They ain't nothing low budget about you no more. Oh, can't no. say you low budget now, man. Big time. <laughs> I, Comic Book Man and Clerks 3. And, well, we got canceled, so. There's not, everything's low oh, well, look, look who you're talking to. <laughs> you got cancer. I'll tell you something about getting cancer. Absolutely, absolutely. Join the club, buddy. Why did y'all get canceled, though? Why did, I have no man? idea. People ask that all the time. I, I don't know. Just one day I get a text. Oh, so you like me. You're one of the last people to know. Oh, First to go, we, last to know. We always are the last person to know. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, know what they told me? What did they tell you? They told me when Aqua Team got canceled, like officially, yes. in 2016, I was at the studio doing a recording for Aqua Team. Yeah. Matt Malero and Dave Willis were there directing me. 
but they waited till after I finished the session. Of course. To tell me. Right. The they were smart. Because let me tell you something right now. If they had told me before I went in that booth, it would have been a whole different recording session. <laughs> no, screw this. I hate this. I, that, that. I literally cried when they told me that Aqua Team was canceled. Man, for I was paying my rent. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, for 15 and a half years, let me go on. It was, it was fun, know? man. That's like, the, the, I actually know both of the guys that do Tony the Tiger. One of them's name is Tony Daniels, and the other one's name is Jim Cummings. You know Jim Cummings. Yeah. Winnie the Pooh, et cetera, et cetera. These are the guys that are doing Tony the Tiger now. That's like if you tell one of them, uh, we're going to have to let you go. That's not great at all. <laughs> That's not. But, you know, it's like, uh, I know they fired Gilbert Godfrey for doing the Affleck duck because he said something stupid about something or somebody or some group. I don't know who's doing the Affleck duck now, but I don't think it's Gilbert Godfrey unless they made up with it. No, it's a guy who sounds just like Gilbert Godfrey. Well, you know, you can find those guys. Yeah. They can sound like pretty much anybody. Gilbert so was the first there. guy to get canceled on Twitter for making an, obs uh, an offensive joke. He lost millions. Yeah, yeah he I, did. You know what, though, my friend? I think we'll be back. You know, they, they brought back, like, Friday Kid. They brought back, like, Saved by the Bell. I think we'll be back. In 20 years, Comic Book Man will be back? I'll be very old by then, but I'll be ready to go in 20 Will you years. still be collecting comic books? Oh, for sure. Oh, oh, I, oh, oh yeah. there's comic yeah. books. There would be comic book men. But you I, know what? I think you're going to have to adjust the title. You can't call it comic book men anymore. You got to call it comic book people. <laughs> or comic book PC. Oh, okay. Person, yeah, people correct. Like the, the yeah, culture, you got to be careful now. I'm fine with that. That's why y'all get canceled, because of comic book men, damn it. That, that it should have been comic book persons. Yeah, people, that, places. Because that has a great oh, request. <laughs> That's got kind of a good request. Great question, though, my friend. I would love to just play myself, but as like a Ken John version. That would be hilarious. It'd be fun. Hey, I can hook you up. Yeah. The we'll see. Asian neighbor. There's New something Jersey in the neighbor. future for you, possibly. We, we, yeah, we might be going places. Maybe. We might be going places. I would love that. He went to the Claremont Lounge. Uh, yeah, anybody from Last Atlanta? night. Anybody from Atlanta? You Claremont know about the Claremont. I'm giving y'all a plug, Claremont Lounge. The Frylock says go to Claremont Lounge. It's a landmark. It's the greatest Tell place Blondie, ever. Tell Blondie, I sent you. Tell them about Blondie. Have you both had the Blondie treatment? Uh, I oh, know, I, I know Blondie. Yeah. yeah. I know Blondie. Blondie She's in a comic movie. book. Yeah. It's a family she, show. She but yeah. just had a beef with a uh, local brewery. Oh, yeah? She was using her image on their beer cans. Yeah. And she sued, and she actually won. I hope she gets good. She did. She won. So she was, at one point she couldn't even get any beer out of it. Yeah. <laughs> good for her. She oh, didn't Blondie. squeeze hard enough. No, oh, she did not. Man. They got a documentary about her. Look up Blondie Claremont Lounge in Atlanta. Good stuff. You'll see it. To Dr. You drop a greatest. Not place for the kids though. Not for the kids. Greatest place I've ever. Anybody else? Anybody else? Questions, comments, concerns. Yes, complaints even. No, we don't, we don't take the point. That's for the people who run this show. Where's the guy who runs this show? Where's George? George, George we get K, George up here. George K is fighting fire right now. Kusikan George, where are you? George, George K is. Can you come up here please, like George? Sure. Somebody get him. George up here to this panel right now. I would love to talk to him. He's yes, ready. George he's needs ready. to come up here. He's ready a great show. I can't That's what I'm going to talk to him. He's coming. I will name him George, and I will hook him. There he George, is. come get here. Get up here. Get up here, George. Ladies and gentlemen, this George. is the man who put all this together. Yeah, give him a big round of applause. He did a great job. George, give him the mic. Say a few words, George. That was nice. Say, is, it, is, that, is that mic open? Is that mic open? Can you open up that mic? Thank you. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, thanks, Carrie, the, one of the original guests to sign up on the show and, and support the show and Ming for coming out here. Like so many people were involved in putting this show together. Like if I start naming people I'm gonna miss a name and then I'm gonna offend somebody. But my wife, all the volunteers, uh, my kids even, I mean so many people were involved. Look at how many happy people are here though man. That's all yeah. for you. That, your, Great turnout man. Your, Great your, turnout. Your dream turned into reality. Yeah, and it was a long road, you know, like the never-ending story. I mean... So let me ask you this. So yeah. next year, next year, is it going to be a two or three day? Because you can't do one anymore. You <laughs> yeah. got to do two or three at least. 
you gotta extend it. Guy. You gotta at least do two days next year. Man. A lot of I hate one day show. I don't. Okay, let me yeah. rephrase it. I don't hate one day shows, but it's like in college when you would rehearse for a play, and you rehearse for all these months and months and months, and you only get three performances out of it. You only do a weekend performance. You learn all these lines. You did all this blocking. And you only get three shows, and you're done. As an actor, that's like, ugh, can I get some more? That's how I feel about One Day Show. Well, Rome hasn't had a show in like 20 years. And we wanted to know if Rome was going to come out. And Rome came Obviously. out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So let's see what we do for next year, you know? At least give me two days next year. Right? Give me two at least. Let's Three get, would be maybe stretching. I mean, we don't, we don't want to kill you, George, yeah. but... Uh, you Saturday and Sunday next year. I mean, well, me, I don't know. This is Bible Belt. Maybe not Sunday. <laughs> Listen. After church. We'll get the after church crowd. We'll Sunday. get the rest of the comic book men out. The rest of Aqua Team. I would love, that. Aquatine, I would love that, out. too. You All know right. what I mean? You must have a hell of a budget. <laughs> if you're going to get Dave Willis, let me tell you. You got to back a brick truck up to his lawn. I'm going to mortgage. Then maybe. By the way, guys... You have a last opportunity. We're collecting pops for patients, which is a charitable cause that donates Funko Pops to pediatric patients. They're great. We're donating them to uh, uh, Rome uh, Floyd Hospital Medical Center. So if you guys have any, there's plenty of vendors that are still selling them. You can donate them at the front desk or to any of our Walking Dead ambassadors and they will go to a great cause. Uh, we'll be donating right. it before the end of the year, and it's probably the best thing that we do with this show. So if you guys have a chance to do it, pick them up, donate it. You got Harley Quinn there, that's a Harley Quinn. Yeah. This was donated by uh, at Indy Sefuentes table from The Walking Dead. Uh, one of Don Team's uh, tables also collected some pops. So, yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're good people. Yeah, they're sure. a great. They're really good people. I mean, you can't think of a better cause. Really. No, you cannot. So, yeah. All right, y'all hear that? Y'all got some old Funkos y'all want to get rid of? And run home right now. Get them. Big Come thanks back. to you guys. I mean, oh, seriously. For Come on out and Come on. People came out to see you. You guys, you know. So give them a round of applause. Please. The crowd is only as good as the promoter. Thank you. So. Thank you. What, who's coming up? Yeah. Who's coming up after us? Kevin Smith is uh, in the background. He's waiting. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah. He's See coming. Kevin Smith. Yeah. Uh, cosplay contest is coming up oh, shortly. Wow, the big cosplay. Okay, we're going to do the presentation. The prizes, everybody. And then trophies. prizes. Trophies. Trophies. Indeed. Yes. So if you, if you compete in the cosplay contest, now's your time to shine. Oh, yeah. So, Get in here. Yeah. You hear that, Space Go? Oh, okay, oh. listen. Let me yeah. not miss my man Eli. All right, Cubster Eli. Cosplay Photography. Cubster. See, when you start naming names, you forget me. Sure, but he deserves a huge shout-out. He's standing right there. Huge so shout-out. This guy, uh, you know, carried me on his shoulders at times, so. They're very broad shoulders, but yeah. Yes, they are. Here, yeah. Eli. I'm not, I'm not a light guy, so, you know. <laughs> he can bear the force, though. Yeah, he can. Right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's done a lot. I know the man works hard. And Floyd, uh, Rome, Floyd, Parks and Recreation. Uh, have been phenomenal. I mean, just so many people. All the pieces came together to make this show happen. So yeah. I don't want to miss anything. I love this. Like, people came from a long... I, I, I know. People drove for four or five we've, hours to be here. This we've got great. vendors from Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, yeah, Alabama, Alabama yeah. and, and guests from all these places. So, I mean, that's, like, huge. So, is this the first time you put it on the show? This is my first show. Um, this is, might be my not last bad. show. Uh, Not bad for my first show. Thank you. You're doing Just give job. us two days next year, man. Two days? Right. You coming out for days. two days? Yeah. Hell yeah. Right. Two days? Come on. That's that's a that makes it worth it. You know, one day is like uh, four o'clock. Come on, everybody. Like, I'm about to start packing. Uh, it's over. All these vendors with all these little micro dot little things they got to individually bubble wrap to get into their crates. To go. That's what I feel sorry for at the end of the show. Because they gotta wrap all those things. Me, I just throw stuff in the bag. Oh, let's go. Be done. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys. Thank yeah. You guys yes. Out. Thank you guys. Thanks for everybody that came out. Come, everybody's sick of all this. I'm at home all the time with this COVID stuff. And get out of the house. Yeah. Radio Labyrinth. I mean. Thank you. Hey, by the way, is uh, if you uh, subscribe over there with our QC code or whatever they're called. Uh, you can register to win the first season of Aqua Teen on DVD, Whoa. which 
I don't know if he'll sign it for free, but if you win it, he may sign it to give him a couple bucks. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Yeah, but just go see Jeff. Our table's okay. right there. Okay, so I gotta end this because this is really hot. The phone's like okay. drive me crazy. Okay, we'll be here until they kick us out. I don't know. So, it's like yeah, stop by. It doesn't like this. Table. So okay, bye everybody. So guys, stick around for the cosplay contest.